This is Hubert Crawford. I'm going to make a little talk for the Bicentennial. Tell you what Cougville used to be back in the 1900s, 1910, 15. Cougville's always been a center. It used to be a great center for produce. And every year, the people have their hens fat and sell them. And Mr. Morgan had big produce house on the west side, and then he would load these into a chicken cars on the railroad track and ship them to New York. And most any young man back in those days had been to New York because Mr. Morgan would pay for their meals and pay for their train fare back, and we'd ride in the chicken car or the uh, caboose up to New York. And we'd feed the chickens all the way up there and gather the eggs, and we'd usually get a case of eggs apiece and sell them and have that much more money to spend in New York. And it was a great turkey center, and people would drive turkeys from Jackson County and surrounding counties in here, just drive them right along the road. But when night come, why, they went to roost. That's where you had to spend the night. I can remember when they was driven from down in Jackson County up to Cookville, and one time I was along, and my brother and all, and we was at Irma Chaffin's father down on Flint's Creek, and the turkeys went to roost, and we slept right there on the porch and got up the next morning and drove them on towards Cookville. Back in those days, they had uh, very few clubs or anything. They had the Masonic Lodge, the Odd Fellows, and later on they got the Lions Club. And of course, now we have many fine clubs that do wonderful, wonderful work. Back in those days, there was five liver stables in Cookville and five hotels. And on, if you got a buggy and horse for Sunday, you had to put your name in ahead and make the reservation so you could get a, take a girl riding and the horse and buggy Sunday. The uh, liver stables had teams of horses to rent and would rent them to traveling men who would come to Cookville and uh, go out all over the Upper Cumberland section. They had uh, two gray horses to a hack that met the train and take them over to the Richelieu Hotel, where the bus station now is, and uh, unload their uh, trunks over there. They'd take the trunks over there, and they'd put them out on big tables in a big room, and the merchants of the Upper Cumberland section would come in there and put in their orders from the samples, whatever they wanted, and they'd be shipped to them. Then if the traveling men got through there, then they would rent a team from the, with a driver. Mr. Jeff Wall was one of the drivers, and his father run a big liver stable. And they would go and be gone for a week, and sometimes two weeks, all over Lafayette and Red Ball and Springs and Birdstown and Jamestown and Salina and everywhere around in the upper coming section. And they would take the trunks and open them up at a hotel there or someplace, and the people would come in and buy and put in the orders for what they wanted. Uh, Mr. They used to have to haul the freight in Cookville from over at the depot over to the east side, and Mr. Jeff Wall run one of those freight dray wagons across there for many years. In those days, down where Borden's Jewelry Store is now was a band house, and it was a 15-foot plank walk across there, 15 foot high, and you watered your team as you went down through there, and uh, it, they put in some 15 or 20 foot fill all up through there. And uh, down by the planing mill, back in those days, they built a road from uh, Baxter up to Cookville and on to Allgood, and one out to Mr. Harvey Terry's place, and one out on the Dry Valley Road. And those... Uh, when they got down where the plane mill is now and on down through there, they uh, didn't have any dirt to fill, 15-foot fill through there where there was a creek running right down the middle of the road. So my father owned the planing mill, and uh, he gave them the sawdust pile and a bunch of beech logs, and they... When you travel over that now, you can feel the softness of it. You're traveling over 15 foot of sawdust that's been in there for over 50 years. And when they built the T.C. Railroad, built the underpass down on Willow Street, 
Uh, they took out a lot of those old beach logs, and Cecil Montgomery and I were there, and they were just as sound as it was when they put in there 50 years ago. Uh, speaking of Mr. Jeff Wall, Miss Vera was a great horseback rider and was a champion rider of Tennessee and Kentucky, and she could really ride a horse back when she was younger than she is now. We had big mule days then in those days, and this was a big mule center to buy mules, and they'd be here and buy them, and then they had big pens in the liver stable, and the two liver stables on the square. One uh, bunch of mule buyers would take one stable and one the other after they'd buy these mules. The farmers would raise mules and break them and break them to work and then sell them to the mule buyers, and they would ship them down to Mississippi and Georgia and where they raised cotton for them to plow their cotton with. And uh, when they got ready to load them over at the railroad crossing, which is now Walnut Street and First Street, they'd take one of Mr. Wall's big horses and ride him and lead the others and just turn the mules out of the pen, and they would follow these horses right over to the pen, and they would put them in there, and then they would load them in the cars and ship them to Lebanon or wherever they wanted to ship them till they could mate them up and all. Uh, we had post office back in those days was over where the B&B Cafe used to be. And then later on, why uh, they built a post office where the First National Bank parking lot is over there now. And uh, it was just a wooden building with tin that nailed around it and had combination locks that you could work yourself and was rolled up to be one of the beautiful post offices in Tennessee. Uh, then the McBride Saddle. This is the home of the McBride Saddle, and many uh, uh, people who have horses now still have uh, McBride Saddles, and they've had the Mennonites to rebuild them, and uh, they were made by the Whitson Hardware Company, which is located over where the Whitson Building is now, and the tree was made down in White County, and uh, it was out of one piece of timber. It wasn't glued together or anything. It just hewed out and fixed out, and they're still a wonderful saddle. I got four or five of them, and they're, they're really good. And uh, they built a fence around the courthouse. Uh, the fence still there, but it wasn't built there to for show or anything like that. It was built there to keep the cows out of the courthouse yard. And used to, the old town spring, which is located down next to where Whitson Funeral Home is now, uh, all the churches would turn out about 15 minutes early so you could parade down there with your girlfriend and get a drink of water and come on back to church. And uh, everybody drank out of the same dipper. Uh, this, uh, they would load these cars over there of these mules and they'd... Uh, let them down a little bit by hand, and then on until they got three or four cars loaded. Talking about loading cars, they uh, brought a big uh, log in here that had uh, 16 mules to it, and they took it over across Broadway and up uh, Oak Street and back onto the tie yard up there and loaded it on a flat car, and it was seven foot at the little end, and it broke the flat car down. So they had to put four mules to it with a chain and roll it off and get a new flat car to ship it to Baxter. And uh, Mr. Isabel had a big mill in Baxter with a big saw that could saw it, and uh, that was the only mill around this part of the country could saw a log of that uh, size. Used to, where Walnut Street is now, was a railroad track, and that's where they would ship the coal in there to fire the city furnaces and the electric lights and the water was furnished from right down there where the old fire department was and uh, the coal was unloaded right there in front of where the senior citizens is now and my brother Walter Keith and I have unloaded many carloads of coal there. We got five dollars for unloading a carload of coal and we'd get out of school reading and go down there and go to work and a lot of time we'd get home in time to uh, take a bath and go to school. But sometime we'd hit it lucky when they had a dump bottom car while we'd just take a bar and tighten up and loose it up and let it pour out and we'd get home by midnight and we thought we was a flying then because we made a lot of it. And they had a water, a uh, big water tank right above that where the water come from. And the fire department in those days was a reel on two wheels and with a rope tied and 
and uh, handle out in front of it, and we'd all push and pull and take those fire holes, and they were stationed all around over town, and the, ho the nozzles were right on a little peg there, and we'd pull those over there and put the nozzles on and fight the fire. Then they come along later years and uh, said that if we'd get a fire engine, they'd cut the rates down in half, and so Mr. Hugh Hargis and Mr. Arn Cameron and Mr. Bill Hensley were the mayors and commissioners, and I took them, I was fire chief, and I took them to, uh, down to Atlanta, Georgia, and we bought that big American Le France that we use in the parades here now, and it has done a wonderful job over the years, and it still would sit and pump all day if you need to. Uh, the uh, town spring, uh, Glade Spring, down where the Boy Scout Clubhouse is, is where a lot of people watered their horses, and then later on, they put a water trough up in front of where the B&B &B Cafe and one in front of Terry Brothers. And that's where the people uh, watered their horses. And to hitch the horses when they come to town, they had cross ties with holes in them with a log chain through there. And all around the square, they had a hitch post right around behind the stores there, right down through the middle of the street. And that's where everybody hitched their mules and so on. Of course, you could rent a, if it's bad weather and you wanted to, well, you could pay a quarter and they'd keep your horse all day for you in the liver stable. And used to on Saturday nights, everybody met the shopper, they called it, and he'd come up and a lot of people went over there and they'd have a hundred or so gallons of whiskey and everybody had wanted to had them a gallon of Hop Tea Lee, Hop Tea Lee whiskey come in on the shopper for them and they'd all wait and get that. The telephone system we had back in those days was a home phone and two rings and two longs and two shorts or so on and so on the line and yeah, that's a good way to spread the news because everybody when the phone rang they run and eavesdropped and heard what was going on. Uh, large uh, numbers of uh, the boys in this town as I said went to New York back in those days free of charge and uh, really we had a had a good good time. Uh, we had a storm back in the olden days and blowed a lot of Cookville away. And Dr. Farrell, I remember, who was a dentist here, he uh, on Sunday took his mother for a ride in his car, and he had a car, and he took her up towards All Good, and she stopped him and said, Doc, go out there, that's my outhouse. And she they went out there and said, see how my hand is. And so he come back and told her the hen is all right, said, well, go get her. And she was in a box or a basket, and they brought her and put her in the car and took her home, and she told me that all the eggs hatched. Uh, they uh, used to have a wonderful band back in the, those days, and they practiced regularly down there, as I said, at the, where board and jewelry store is now. And uh, we had a band that was a credit to anybody. First automobile we had, uh, Mr. Dietz and uh, Mr. Oldgood Carlin uh, owned it, and it was a taxi cab between here and Sparta and had big high wheels as high as wagon wheels or buggy wheels with chains on them, and everybody tried to save up enough money to get them a round trip to ride over to uh, Sparta and back. And that was uh, a, a great thing back then, and it sure would scare horses when they had started up. Uh, I can remember well when Mr. Bob Rash was sheriff of the county, and he had a big horse and a big dog, and he'd go out and arrest people for being drunk or any misbehavior or anything, and he'd just reach down and get them and throw them up on his horse behind him and uh, tell him to hold on, and he'd bring them in that way. And he, he made a wonderful sheriff, and he was one of the stoutest men that's ever been in Putman County. He could take up 200 pound, two 100 pound uh, nails or two 100 pound of horseshoes and just put one on each arm, carry them on in the store and set them down. We had a fair back in those days out at the old fairground, which is out uh, near the railroad where we got the, uh, they, they sold it and sold out there on North uh, Washington and 10th Street from there on over to the railroad track. And you could ride a train, the TC run a train from down to the depot, and you could ride out there for a dime and come back for a dime. And it was all boxed in with lumber, and they had good fares back in those days. And outside why, was a horse trading place, and you could buy a bundle of fodder for your horse, but it cost you a uh, dollar 
uh, and it had a half a pint inside of it. And but it was a great time, and they uh, everybody come in, and I remember Mr. Warren. They had a Whitson's gave away a stove to the one that brought the most number of people in on a wagon, and Mr. Warren had four big mules to a big log wagon, and had seats like bleacher seats on each side, and had 64 people on it. And when they got out, ready to drive into the ring, got through the gate and ready to drive in the ring, that wagon went right down to the ground. They had to unload everybody, and we they finally the mules moved around and and got it out. Uh, we uh, had a big flour mill here at that time, and everybody in the country, in Jackson County and everywhere else, raised wheat. And uh, they brought the wheat up here to Cookville and had ground. They had a big elevator there right above where the planing mill was. And uh, they ground the wheat and made the flour, and everybody took it home, and they had it. the lumber swung up where they could put the flour on there to do them throughout the year, but they fixed it where mice nothing couldn't get into it at all. And uh, we just had a, it was, a, it was a wonderful meal and wonderful to everybody that would get to uh, come and bring their wheat and have it ground. And if they wanted to sell some wheat, well, they'd sell it to them, and they'd run it right up into this uh, big elevator that burned in many years ago. Uh, we uh, have grown and grown and grown and grown, but when you've been around for 80 years like I have, you have seen a world of changes in this part of the country. We have progressed. Uh, back in those days, most of the people went to Pleasant Hill to school, and many of them are still around here. and. Uh, we all went to Pleasant Hill School, and it was a church school, and we could work our way through. didn't have to have any money at all. They fed us and worked us and clothed us. They had big clothing uh, barrels to come in, and each one of us would go over and pick us out a suit of clothes and pants and shirts and everything else and dress and all. I guess that's where I learned to fool with the Big Brothers back in 1915 up at Pleasant Hill. But... Everybody would see us and say, well, you've got a pretty suit of clothes on. And we told them, yeah. But they were shipped from New York down there. And uh, we just had a great, great time. And we, lots and lots of the businessmen at Cookville today and rural right men and retired men and people that have passed away that have been county judges. At one time, ever office in Putman County was Pleasant Hill graduates. Every office in the courthouse was elected was Pleasant Hill graduates. Now let's all get in behind uh, the bicentennial program. Let's help and let's uh, really get in there and pitch. When we the churches all cooperated in those days and they let the church out on time so they could get over to the depot by 12 o'clock and get their Sunday's paper and the paper boy all we had to do was get down on our knees just hand the man his paper and then we'd go around and uh, We'd remember which one we gave them to at the depot, and the ones that we didn't, but well, we'd deliver them. Uh, as I said, let's let's all uh, just get right in and pitch, and let's let Cookville be the outstanding uh, city with the bicentennial program, and and you've got a wonderful bunch of people that are really getting in there and doing a good job, but don't just say let John do it, let's all get in and uh, let's help. And, and we can, and I, I believe we will, and, and uh, let's, let's do it. Thanks a lot. This is Hubert Crawford, and thank you a lot.